Thank you. I think you followed the advice pretty well, Sandra. So thank you so much. Um, just so you know, you have a leader here who paid her bills on time. <laughs> well, <good for> me. <laughs> um, and just a, it was just a, an amazing experience to watch her take a take a small business into really a mid-sized Alaska business and, and uh, move that move that from its infancy to a real success story. So that's the that's kind of the beauty of Alaska is we get to help each other do that. I also want to just raise for a moment um, the tragedy in Connecticut and just let. Uh, you all know and the world know that our thoughts and prayers and our condolences go out to all those uh, tragically impacted in Connecticut with a the shooting there and um, shootings. I know our lieutenant governor went to that elementary school and has a close connection with the community and uh, just cannot even imagine the devastation that that is, has wreaked there. So I uh, just wanted to express our sadness and our sense of loss with the people of that community and, and uh, our nation as well. So a budget doesn't come together without a lot of help from a lot of good people. And there are many in this room serving you who I want to recognize. And if you are a member of our cabinet, would you please stand up and would you all give them a hand as well? So remember the cabinet, including my executive office team. So, The budget begins coming together in July for the following July new fiscal year. And so that is spearheaded in large part by the Office of Management and Budget, which has a team working there with, the, with each department. And the team that's been working day and night at OMB is led by Karen Rayfeld and her team. Would you please give them a hand as well for their diligent work? I want to recognize Lieutenant Governor Treadwell is here. Would you please rise? Me. Thanks. And so today we release our 2014 State of Alaska budget proposal. And as we develop this budget, weighing the priorities, I had to reflect on kind of one word that sums up our current position as a state, and that is solid. It comes from the word solidus, kind of a a gold coin in Roman times and in today's world where many governments are saddled by debt and our own government prints money backed by more paper, a gold coin is a very good currency indeed. And so Alaska is solid. A AAA bond rating, more than $16 billion in budget reserves, close to $43 billion in the permanent fund. We're paying down what have been defined as unfunded liabilities and we've been named the sixth best run state in the nation and we are in fact a solid state. And solid we shall remain, because we're going to remain responsible and responsive. And today I propose a budget that is $1.1 billion leaner than the current year. It holds the operating budget to 0.8% growth. Pretty hard to find a year in recent memory when that was the case. As we prepared the budget, we had to face the facts. Oil production is down, and oil prices too have decreased. The production decline and rising cost of producing our oil profoundly impacts Alaska's revenue. The fall forecast shows a combined 1.6 billion, that's with a B, drop in projected revenue over this fiscal year and next. So what that means is when the legislature left last spring, the spring forecast of revenue projections and the new fall forecast show that between this year and next, there's 1.6 billion less in revenue. That means we will use the statutory budget reserves, our savings in this fiscal year, to cover projected expenditures by a little over $400 million. But you'll see with the budget coming up, we don't intend to do that. Less revenue means we will spend less in 2014. Belt tightening is nothing new to us, though it does take time to slow this locomotive of state spending. Each year we've scaled back. I've slowed budget increases the, our administration asks for each December 15, even against the pressure of formula program growth. And I've scaled back legislative appropriations in the past with record vetoes. Here's what the trend of operating budget growth 
looks like. You can see our continual operating budget belt tightening. The blue line on the bottom are our administration's proposed operating budgets across the last four times I've been, I've been before you, so across the last three years. The top red line represents the legislature approved and, and governor approved budgets on the operating side. And so you see the trend is distinctly downward. Over the same time, we strengthened our savings accounts by saving surpluses. The constitutional budget reserve has more than 11 billion in it. The statutory budget reserve has more than 5 billion in it. And setting aside some seed corn in times of surplus helps in the coming leaner times. And with declining production and oil revenue, we also have to be smarter with your money, with the people's money, and gain efficiencies. We're working to decrease overhead costs through more efficient and cost-effective procurement. We are systematically reducing the footprint and cost of state office space. We propose a balanced budget. And as I mentioned, our budget proposal spends less than last year, over $1 billion less in state funds. It totals $6.49 billion of state unrestricted general funds and $12.8 billion total, including those federal funds and the permanent funds. With our budget proposal, even with the spending plan we're putting forward, we project a surplus of over $500 million. So we leave room for some community and legislative priorities. So to summarize, this balanced budget spends less and saves more than the current year's budget. As I've done in the past, and I've had meetings with legislative leadership of both parties um, in the last 24 hours, I've asked them to set a spending limit with me. Because a self-imposed reasonable limit is the key to successful and more sustainable spending. It imposes greater accountability. It allows us to emphasize our constitutional priorities, resources, public safety, education, transportation, infrastructure. In recent weeks, I've talked about key initiatives of our administration, initiatives reflected in the budget. I'm going to start with public safety, because the budget is strong on public safety, a core, a core function of government. We continue our commitment to end Alaska's epidemic of domestic violence and sexual assault. And I'm so proud of the 120 communities in this state that have stepped forward in 2012 to host Choose Respect rallies and marches and raise awareness there. But our Choose Respect initiative will be reinforced in this budget with about $15 million, including $3 million for domestic violence and sexual assault prevention efforts, and over half a million for shelters and services, nearly $2 million for child abuse prevention and treatment and child advocacy centers. So we're budgeting for 15 more troopers in the rail belt, five in the Matsu, five in Fairbanks, five on the Kenai Peninsula, where our law enforcement has not kept up with a growing population. We'll continue providing law enforcement to communities that have none. So just like in the prior years, we'll add 15 village public safety officers into those communities that have no law enforcement whatsoever right now. They will be supported by an additional trooper as well. We're budgeting for a new trooper post in Hooper Bay and a trooper to support the added village public safety officers that I mentioned. Additionally, we're beefing up prosecutions. We're proposing three new prosecutors and legal support in Bethel, Fairbanks, and Juneau to pursue child sexual abuse cases. Three investigators as well to work these child abuse and sex trafficking cases. In Alaska, crimes against children will be prosecuted to, this, to the greatest extent of the law. There's just no way around it. We cannot cut corners. Chinook salmon research. You know, our fisheries not only sustain us nutritionally, they are an economic engine for our people. The budget proposes $10 million for the first part of a five-year comprehensive salmon research initiative. These salmon are a cornerstone of our culture and our livelihood, and we must work for the long-term return of the kings through better data and fisheries management. Every region of Alaska faces challenges with energy costs, and our plan will help with that, move the ball down the field to our 50% renewable energy goal. The budget includes more than $531 million as part of our comprehensive energy strategy. It's a package with hydro project dollars, low cost financing for energy projects, weatherization, renewables, energy efficiency. Let's go through some of it. We propose $95 million for year three of the Susitna Watana hydro project. Susitna Watana will provide dependable, long-term, 
clean energy to the rail belt at lower stable rates. Funding continues our field work for the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission license. And another Susitna Watana milestone was met today when the study plan was filed with the FERC. We're proposing $13.7 million to go to Bradley Lake Hydro and upgrades there to the power plant that will allow it to operate at optimum capacity. This will allow excess power to be supplied to rail belt communities as far north as Fairbanks. Our budget continues weatherization and heating assistance for low-income households, as well as fully funding the power cost equalization program. We also added funds for those powerfully effective home energy rebates. We're jump-starting a private sector project for our North Slope LNG plant. It has the potential to bring gas via truck to Fairbanks and perhaps by rail to Anchorage as a backstop to cook in the supplies. The project also opens access to propane for road and river communities from Fairbanks. And the target for first delivery is the latter part of 2015. And moving to education, we aim high here. Our, our goal is 90% graduation rate by 2020. We share that goal with many community groups and we're all in this together to make it happen. And today's rate is headed in the right direction, ticking, ticking up to nearly 70%. As we increase academic achievement with the Alaska Performance Scholarships, we're adding access to better learning tools and resources. To provide better access to education opportunity, opportunity we're seriously upping Alaska's game when it comes to distance delivery. The Association of Alaska School Boards is working with districts on digital learning in several locations with compelling results. And we're gonna partner with the association in a four-year digital learning initiative to build on that good work. The budget funds almost $6 million for the statewide digital learning initiative. The Alaska one-to-one -one direct or digital technology project, which over four years will provide digital devices to more than 32,000 students and 2,000 teachers per year. We'll make improvements to the Alaska Learning Network's distance delivery to 53 districts and provide dollars for online homework help and broadband support. These 21st century technologies the distance learning, the online assessments, these all provide pathways to a better education for our young people. And using a model that's succeeding in 33 states, we will engage students who are in danger of not graduating. We'll do this through our Jobs for Alaska Graduates partnerships with the Department of Labor, United Way, and school districts, and businesses like yours. A few weeks back, I asked the State Board of Education to make sure teacher and principal evaluations were based in part on student learning. Most parents thought teachers were evaluated already on progress that our kids were making in the classroom, but that's not the case. The Board of Education recently met and passed new regulations so that now excellent teachers can be validated and recognized for their work. Struggling teachers will be encouraged and motivated to focus more closely on preparing their students because our current teacher an administrator evaluation system recognizes and motivates no one. Across the nation, educators have adopted student learning as part of the criteria for teacher evaluations. And we've now done it as well. Our students and teachers deserve it. The budget fully funds and forward funds K-12 education and people transportation at more than $1.2 billion, including $25 million in addition for expected energy cost increases. Finally, there's over $68 million for two new schools, one in Nightmute, one in Quinnahawk. Uh, the Nightmute school is, is next in the schedule that was agreed to in the Kasaili settlement of that lawsuit, along with 12 major maintenance projects around the state. And now the infrastructure and roads to resources. Infrastructure forms a foundation for commerce and jobs, and this budget includes more than $1 billion for roads and airports, the marine highway, municipal and village, water and sanitation systems, harbors, deferred maintenance, and more specifically, roads to resources are direct paths to Alaskan opportunity. So there's $8.5 million for the Ambler Mining District Road, and we're gonna continue working on access to this mineral-rich area. There's $2 million more for the Department of Transportation to identify and develop corridors for timber and mining resources. We propose a down payment into a project reserve fund for the Kinnick Arm Crossing. If we make several payments into the fund in coming years, that fund will be ready to leverage 30-year tax exempt financing in the years ahead when those permits are ready to go. And speaking of permitting, we're doing better on the state side than the federal government. We have whittled our backlog by 34% in the last year and a half. 
and we'll put over $3 million in this budget into the Unified Permitting Project. The project will continue to improve our state timelines for permit decision making, whether it's mining, timber, public access, land sales, and the like. Nearly $3 million will go towards our strategic minerals assessment. That's already underway, but Alaska is rich in rare earth elements, something that our country needs for national security as well as for consumer electronics. We've requested $4 million for statewide digital mapping. With this budget request, I know it's hard to believe we, we haven't really mapped the Arctic, but with this budget request with $4 million, we should be able to complete the mapping of our Arctic region. There's $15 million to purchase a building for the Geologic Materials Center. If you think about it, our state has a lot, many, core samples that have been taken that are part of our record. So in a particular unit that's being leased by DNR for, for a mining prospect, for example, the state has core samples that a company can come in and look at. But those samples are stored in container vans, uh, hard to access, and we propose putting those in one place, in one building, easily accessible to the companies that will invest here and, and to our public as well. There's $50 million in the budget for gas line development, half of that to the Alaska Gas Line Development Corporation and half to uh, the Agea Reimbursement Fund. As you can tell, we've put a heavy emphasis on resources and accessing them. They're the solid economic building blocks that Alaskans require in good times and in bad. Now how about talking about the elephant in the room? declining production, greater state investment in infrastructure, the sustainability of our financial system. It's going to take a very different revenue projection than we have today. It's going to take one that we, we turn around rather than continue on this decline path, and this is not, should not be a surprise. But we are in a time of oil production decline, and you can be sure that we are not discussing, we are not done discussing how to boost production of oil. Two years ago in November, November we moved 641,000 barrels a day. This November, 582,000 barrels per day. And that does not bode well. We all, we all know this, and so we must and we will together reverse this decline. Getting a more fair and balanced system, a more simple system, a more productive fiscal system. That remains a top priority. So to wind up our overview, with the global economy as, as it is, with less production coming through the pipeline, we will continue to rein in spending, 1.1 billion less in this proposed budget. We begin from a position of strength. You know, Alaska is solid, there's no question. The budget's leaner. We're meeting our constitutional priorities. And through our resources and through the ingenuity of Alaskans, we have much more opportunity ahead. So I'm going to take some questions now, but uh, before I do, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year as well. Thank you.